Hiya, I'm Hallie Labonte, and this is Mega, coming to you from Twin Hills Community Church, where every single week we give our mega church a tiny family feel. We introduce you to members of our church staff, people from our community, and I always think it's a treat, and I always think it's a treasure. Well, per usual, I'm joined by my co-host. He's the youth pastor for our high school ministry called Climax. Please welcome Gray Haas. What's up, Hallie? So nice to be here, and I'm so excited for our next guest. Ooh. Me too. Just like Jesus enjoyed a last supper, our guest today is going to help you get a God fear and supper on the table. It is my pleasure to introduce Lisette Brussels. How you doing, my friend? Welcome to the program. I am so blessed to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm thrilled. I'm just, I don't know. I'm quivering over here. <laughs> oh, well, I'm so excited to talk about food. It's one of my favorite subjects. That is right. I could Let's, talk about uh, it all day. Yep. Uh, well, we, we will keep you here talking about it because uh, something that people need to know is Lisette is, uh, what, what would you call yourself? Sort of the shepherd of every recipe that has ever passed through the doors of this church. You are getting your hands on and you are putting it every year into one of the most, I would say, anticipated cookbooks yeah. in, in all of the Christian world. Or author? Right? Do we say cookbook yeah, do we author? Say, do we what say do we author? What do we call you? Well, you know, if you wanted to call me an author, I'm not about to stop you. A best-selling <laughs> you know? author, I would yeah. say, honestly. Yeah, you know, well, we... The book, the book that I put together is the book to have in our church. I mean, not taking anything away from the Bible sure. itself, but you yeah, know, yeah. I'm hoping that the second book on everyone's list is Feast and Fellowship, oh. uh, which is the book that I put together full of recipes from our own church members. And <laughs> uh, let me tell you, there are some mouthwatering morsels and delicious dishes to be had because we got some talented cooks in our church. And you know what, Lisette? I don't know about you, and I don't know if this makes me a busybody, saw me in half, but <laughs> I feel like reading certain people's recipes gives us an insight into their character, their tastes. You know, it's almost like going through somebody's garbage. It's like, oh, well, Edith Blackburn has a layered dip that uh, uses... I'm trying to think what's a dumb fucking... Uh, 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 sh has a layer dip that doesn't have any mayonnaise. And I want to say, where does she get off? Well, you're thinking to yourself, mayonnaise is the perfect layer and you layer it into everything. So yeah, there are definitely some adventurous recipes in there. Um, <laughs> I, I've got to tell you, I one thing that always tickles me is seeing who who submits recipes that are pretty much the same. You know, it's almost like wearing the same dress as someone else to a party. Oh, you no. know, you've got um, you've got Lizzie Walton's chili con carne, and then you know Teresa Updike over here has got exactly the same recipe. And what do you do? So I oh. kind of just list both of their names under that same recipe, and it brings people together. You know, it's sort of like if I'm eating, you know pineapple and miracle whip on my dinner table every night and this person over here is eating the same thing well then now we've got something in common and we're not so frightened of each other anymore and that right that's the unity that jesus brings if you ask me it's such a great thing that you have this cookbook because you've been doing this for i would say what 10 to 15 years now and it always used to be called 16 the 16 16, of wow. 16 editions wow mm -hmm. and you know it always yeah. used to be called just you know twin hills community church cookbook um but but since you've rebranded uh and i've noticed that now it's being published by zondervan which is a big awesome. christian publisher which is awesome. awesome that is right and actually you can find it on uh, several websites for sale including a big one you might know is amazon.com awesome oh, excellent yeah oh, you wow, can I'm buy right you now. can You've buy gotten... feast and fellowship Lisette Brussels Feast and Fellowship on Amazon. <laughs> that is and that's exciting for me. And so are you able to give all the – so when it comes to the proceeds, because I've seen – sorry, I'll do that again. That is so awesome. And when it comes to the proceeds, are you able to give those back to the church? Yeah, you know, that's what this cookbook truly is all about. I gather the, like you said before, and I love this, I'm a shepherd of the recipes. The recipes are like little lambs and I lead them directly into those pages and I, I tuck them in and I, and, and I, yeah, I, I do the, the proceeds are, well, you know, this, that's of course all handled by lawyers um, at this point because we have grown a lot and uh, it used to be, I, I'm not exactly sure of the, uh, the breakdown because I'm 
also paying for my own personal costs and, um, you know, the costs that go into just the massive undertaking that is gathering these recipes from all over our church. Um, so, so yes, the, a portion of the proceeds do go back into the church. That okay. is so cool. And I just have to say, by getting there on that Amazon uh, list, that is a way to be in the world and not of the world. You know what I mean? We're going to sneakily get all these secular humanists eating Christian food, and the next thing you know, they're welcoming God into their life. And I we're just really, I have to really um, pat you on the back or prop you up and just give you a, a, a real shout out for really, um, this is such a cool, I, I shouldn't say sneaky, I should say strategic way. In the same way, like the Republican Party has to be strategic about who votes. You know, it's not just like everybody vote. It's like, no, only the good people should vote in the same That's way. So true. It's like only the good Christians should be talking about food or anything, frankly. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. And you know, as well as I do, that people who are not Christians and specifically people who are outside of this region might not know what's good, you know, as <laughs> That's far right. as food goes. They they might not understand the way that we like to cook things or the ways in which we pile it or assemble it. And that's something that I really want to send out to the far corners of the earth. You know, what uh -huh. if there's someone who's who's starving yeah. in another country and they don't understand that you might be able to combine um pineapple with american cheese and uh -huh. you know uh -huh. just layer it with some vinegar and sugar and you might be surprised with how delicious it is well maybe they've got both those things lying around and they just haven't thought to combine them and that's why they're going hungry that, yeah i love that you know and i'm leafing through the new edition here and one thing just the organizational quality that you gave the edition this year i thought was amazing because instead of just doing a list of you know uh, or, or you know i thought the organizational quality of how you did the cookbook this year was amazing instead of doing meat a vegetable etc you did it in let's see you've got flats piles mm -hmm balls and so you're kind of going on shapes of food or or and then you've got mounds and i think that's so interesting because i think a lot of times people tubes, are going to rolls mm -hmm. and squares yes, right. and people are going you know tonight i don't I, i'm not thinking meat vegetable i'm thinking i'd like a pile and a ball and a mound yep. what are some yep, yep, what yep. are some different i need something flat yeah, yeah, yeah. yes that's exactly you know what i think it was uh, I think it was William Shakespeare who said, we eat with our eyes first. And so what I'm trying to do is get a bunch of shapes together on the table that's going to be visually appealing to a family. And, you know, for example, you might you might have a log, like let's say you have a ham log. Well, mm -hmm. over here, you've got some spikes and that's um, some asparagus spears just stuck straight up in sort of a hardened melange of jello and mayonnaise, and that's your salad. And then over here, you've got a pile, and that's sort of like a thick and chunky soup. Um, and maybe that, let's see, we've got, we've got our ham, we've got our greens. So maybe the soup has, um, I don't know, banana, banana chunks. Maybe it's got um, some skim milk, because a lot of us are watching our figures. But it's sort of like a sweet and, and hearty soup that we can, uh, we can eat along with the rest of that. So I just, I'm trying to combine all the different shapes together. And when you do that, I think you're going to find that the flavors are not far behind. I, I said, it's innovative. I love it's, that. I, I don't think I've ever seen a soup plated in quite that way that you can sort of mound up the soup on a, a platter like that. And then everyone just can kind of dip in. And it really, I all tw oh no, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I've told people, I've said, you know, don't invest in bowls. Don't invest in bowls, invest in platters, because what you're going to want is a mound. People, people like to look at food and think there is too much of that. I'm going to get in there. No one wants to think, oh, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm just going to have a single serving of something. Someone wants to think, someone wants to look at a pile of food and think, I need to help with that. They yes. need help. Oh, I want to get in there. I'm going to dive right in. It's giving Speaking me... of which, I don't think I've received either of your recipes oh. for my call for submission. <laughs> I keep a very detailed list of who has responded and who has not. And I'm just wondering when I can expect to see those recipes from you two. 
Oh, it's on my to-do list. I've been meaning to do this for weeks because um, I really, because I'm honestly, if I can be honest with you, Lisette, I think I'm putting too much pressure on it. I feel like I'm going to be judged based on my recipe and I'm putting too much pressure on it, but I should just pick something that is like a, a, a household staple in the Levant house, maybe. Yeah. What would that be, Hallie? Well, you know what? This has given me good language, uh, Lisa, honestly, to, to talk to my kids, uh, to have better conversations with my kids surrounding food, because my kids will give me a hard time. They'll be like, mom, everything in this whole meal is white and we're supposed to be eating colorful food, greens and, and oranges and whatever. And, and Because like to me, the perfect meal is fettuccine Alfredo, a cheesy breadstick, maybe followed by a snickerdoodle. So what? It's all white. It's a mound, it's a tube, and it's a circle. So there well, is can variety. Can I give you a tip? Yes. Can I just give you a tip about including colors in your meals? Because mm -hmm. I've certainly run into that same problem before. You want something that's all the same color. Maybe you just want a plate that's hot and brown. Yep. But- one thing that I can help you with is a great way to add color is just suspending whatever you want to make in jello. So awesome. let's say you've got Salisbury steak, just get, okay, citrus jello always works well with the flavors of gravy and beef. So let's say you put some Salisbury steak chunks with some sliced celery in that lime or lemon jello. You put it out on a table. You've got a surprise that people can't wait to just destroy. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's like a preservative and it, it, so then you can leave it out a long time and it's fine. Like my kids will say, why does every single casserole have to be slathered in mushroom soup? Or why does every cold salad have to be, um, you know, uh, covered in mayonnaise? And I'm like, because it preserves it longer. It's that's not exactly just about right. the great flavor. There's a strategy here. So maybe that's what I will do. Liz said, I should just stop, uh, be putting too much pressure on it. And I'm going to, I'm going to submit my, my fettuccine Alfredo. That's heavy on the parm, by the way. I hope you like oh, cheese because I do a heavy parm in the fettuccine sauce and also on, and also on top. Um, well, so I'll you do know, my, one. my, uh, my husband Rodney used to say, Lisette, I think you're mostly made of cheese. <laughs> awesome. And I said, thank you. That's a compliment. Cheese is my favorite food. Yeah, so is the moon, and God made that. Now, what would you make, Gray? I know he likes a lot of proteins. Yeah, the uh, oh, you know, the thing that I'm really interested in right now is how do you get more protein in a protein? Oh. And so I've been doing a thing with, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but my friend Clay, Clay Mason, Mason Bannerman, Bannerman. Um, where we take a pork loin and I'll roll it in a creatine dust, and that actually forms kind of a crusty outside shell to it and really keeps the flavor locked in. And so maybe that would, I could include that in a tube or actually something in, I also noticed that you had a uh, particulate, uh, I also noticed you had a category for dust and particulate uh, That's foods. Cool. That's very true. Um, you know, dust in particular is, a, is an important component to uh, many recipes. I think I would, I would, um, I categorize what you just mentioned in more of like a log rather than a okay. tube because you think of a tube being stuffed with something. Oh, and I see. A log is really more solid. But I can't say that I've ever heard of um, creatine, but I do I do support dusts of all kind. I've been known to, to grind a, a flavorful cereal into a crust for a meat or, awesome. you know, you can use pork rinds, corn chips, potato mm. chips, oh. corn flakes. Um, anything of that nature. And if you dip pretty much anything moist in that, you're going to have a real flavor winner. So if creatine is anything like those things, I'm definitely willing to try it. Oh, I did. I yeah. Say, I know looking at you, I think you might need a little bit more meat on your bones. Well, I mean, you look quite <laughs> well, wiry, but you know, where's, the, where's the padding for the long winter that is to come? That's that right. I mean, the tribulations. Uh, okay. That's true. Too. What do we say? Went wiry. Anyway, I do want to point out before we get uh, into some of maybe your favorite recipes from the cookbook mm -hmm. this year is how did you get so interested in food and recipes? Uh, did you grow up in France or something like that? Uh, nope, just right here in the heartland is uh, oh, really? where I grew up. And I, um, you know, I, I was always interested in cooking and chefery. <laughs> awesome. I like to say. That's not a word, but I like to say it anyway. Um, and I, I've always been fascinated with uh, the ways in which we can bring people together over food. And then, you know, I, I used to always contribute to the potlucks. For a while, I was having that... Um, 
Fondue Fridays event at the church. I don't know. I you love might Fondue Friday. Young to remember that. <laughs> oh no, I, I just love. Set up a crock pot, crock pots all over with different things to dip. One would have just um, ketchup and grape jelly in it. One would just have like hot peanut butter and marshmallow fluff. I stopped it after um, there was that incident, which I still. Oh, yes. I, uh, that was because of the um, hot mayonnaise and ground shrimp fondue that I had created. And I think the reason was it wasn't anything to do with the quality of the, it was just, I had, I assumed that if you leave something in a crock pot and the crock pot is on, then that food is probably safe to eat. So I'd started the, the hot shrimp and mayonnaise fondue uh, a day or two before just sort of letting it, the flavors meld. And um, we did, uh, get a couple people afterwards who weren't feeling their best. And uh, so that's when Fondue Friday had to um, make its way out of the rotation. But <laughs> I'm uh, hoping to bring it back in at some point. I've learned some lessons. Yeah. And I, well, I'll tell you what, I'm so glad you've brought up crock pots because I think they're so important and it's a very God honoring kitchen appliance. And yes. because I can't tell you the amount of times I've started to preheat the oven and I say, you know what, if Jesus comes back, this is going to be left on and the apocalypse in our house could blow up, uh, you know? And so I've really, I, I think no bake cookies, that's what I'll submit. I think no bake cookies are very God honoring. That's a Christ centered cookie because you don't even turn on the oven. He could come back at any second. There's no reason to bake these because they're called no bakes and we can have a nice little chocolate and oatmeal flavoring as we, you know, search the skies with our eyes for his return. But um, I do think a crack, pot is very God honoring in that you, you're sort of, um, who's got the time to spend a lot of time focused on all your food when we have to be prepared for the second coming. And so if you can just throw stuff in a crock pot, then if we do make it to dinner without his return, then there is something to eat, but you didn't have to, you know, take your eyes off the skies, so to speak. That's so true. And that's why I think a lot of these ingredients that we tend to use, uh, such as your Miracle Whips, your Velveetas, oh, um, you know, your Velveeta. marshmallow fluffs, your, oh, your just marshmallows yes. in general. These are shelf stable items that, frankly, I don't even know if they can go bad. And so that's part of the reason I like to use them, because let's say I'm taken up in the middle of making a batch of your no bake cookies, Hallie. Well, then I've got a pantry full of shelf stable items that can be just melted down together to make something delicious and even if someone happens upon my home two years after I'm raptured they're still going to be able to find something tasty to eat and that's my gift to them. And I noticed that in the cookbook here it says if you do leave some of these because you've got a lot of uh, I guess in it, piles are kind of referenced in the crock pot method, but you do say that if the pile is left in the crock pot for maybe too long, then it, then you just move that over to the slabs category. And then you've got slabs that can be cut up and used or whatever and, you know, serve more as a casserole or something. That's exactly right. Or you could take that slab, roll it out real thin, roll it around something else, and then you've got a tube. I mean, this is the thing, too. All of these shapes can easily be transmogrified into a different shape. And uh, cool. that's sort of something that uh, that I think is is kind of fun about food. Sometimes you look at it and you think, well, I'm a creator, too, just like our Lord was. I'm here. I I'm here with my loaves and my fishes. Yep. And I'm uh, I'm about to distribute it to to the entire church and they can <laughs> dip they can dip it into the crock pot full of ketchup and jelly. And then that's that's something that everyone can get behind, I'm sure. Um, you you are such a Christ follower. You are such a beautiful example of the generosity of spirit that Christians have, that you're stocking your pantry basically with food that will never go bad so that once the uh, people who didn't know Christ are wandering around in the tribulation under all of the torment of the Antichrist and whatnot, they'll be able to ransack your house and get some good ingredients. And speaking of these wonderful ingredients, you mentioned the marshmallow fluff, you mentioned the Velveeta. I I'm drooling right now just even thinking about it. And I was wondering, based on those things, is there a common ingredient to all these Christian, to all these twin hillers submissions? Is there anything that feels like it, you know, like, wow, this is really a twin hills staple? Yeah, what's the go-to? 
Well, let me tell you one of my favorites that I see a lot every year. That is sausage cake. Yeah, you know, it's sort of like a it's a coffee cake, but it's got that crumbled pork sausage in it. And that way you got pretty much just a complete breakfast. You got the sweet, you got oh, the salty, yeah. you got the porky. All you need is a hot cup of coffee with that piece of sausage cake. Awesome. And, um, that one's close to my heart because, you know, that used to be uh, one of Rodney's favorites. And Oh, is your I'll husband you passed? I. Uh, I well, that is to be determined. Oh um, no, TBD. Well, so I, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to dwell too much on it. But um, well, you know, uh, Rodney was a long distance trucker, and uh, he would he would go on long uh, long trips. You know, he would he he might be gone on one job for like a year to two years, and yeah, I sure. would say to him, you know. He would he would always say, um, you know, I, I'm just I'm taking so long because I I value my truck and I've got to drive it real slow. Yeah. And anything above 15, 20 miles an hour is very hard on a big semi truck like that. So he would really? be gone for a while. I wouldn't see him. And um, it was a few years back that they found his truck uh, outside of a Love's truck stop oh. in Reno. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, and he was he was not in the truck. Um, so he, uh, I'll tell you what I think happened, though. And I feel I can trust you both with this. I think you know how there's early admission to college. You're you're a, you're a kid who's in high school and you apply to early admission. And then yeah. they say to you, yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Yeah. I think there is a secret program that's like an early rapture. Oh. I think that God has decided to just take a few of us here and there because he just can't wait. He cannot wait yeah, to have yeah. these people in heaven. And what I think is because, you know, there's no sign of Rodney. I think he must have been early raptured. So it, about how long ago was this? Oh, gosh. Two years? What was it now? Two, uh, two, three, three, four. Oh, it was actually three and a half years ago. Yes. Or what? Okay. So that would have been what edition of the cookbook? That oh, would have been gosh. the 12th, tw- 11th. Uh, I think it was the second release of the twelfth edition of the. Game. Awesome! Okay. That's awesome, and mm-hmm. and you know what? There was one. There is one person in the Bible who was raptured. You know, never had to die, and so we know it's possible. It also could be. Who knows? Maybe he got a truck upgrade, and he's still out on a on a trip, and he, he'll be home anytime. You just don't know. You know that's true, but I think the early rapture is more likely. Probably because. Yeah. You know, he was he was very good about, you know, when when he would be gone for for a year or so at a time, he was always good about, um, you know, just sending me a sending me a quick text, you know, every yeah. now and then. You, you know, you can't text while driving. So he didn't send me a lot of texts. Sure. But mm. he would occasionally say, you know, hi. So you knew <laughs> okay. he was still alive. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's I love that. He's out there somewhere. That's I used cool. to I used to joke with them. I used to say, "What do you have another another family out there?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Literally another family out there, and we would laugh. Ah. Uh-huh. And is that um? I'm just looking through the flipping through the book. He the are, are the Rodney balls the is that one of is that are those his recipe? Is that his recipe? No, it's just a recipe that I created in honor of him. It just reminds cool. me of him. You know, just these. Oh. Sort of, you know, um, they're sort of. They're, they're just these, um, are you familiar with brown schwager? Uh, oh, no, what's that? It's a soft liver pate. And what Ooh. I do is I mix that with cream cheese and I freeze it and then I roll it in nuts and I put it on oh. a little toothpick, like a, like a fun little oh, meaty, livery lollipop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh. uh, that's, I save those for special occasions because I just know you know, it reminds me of Rodney in a lot of ways, but, but he would, I think he would have had fun with it. You know, oh. he would have, he probably would have picked them up and used a couple of them like little maracas or something. like. That. <laughs> oh, was he a fun guy? Was he kind of a funny guy? Well, he had an odd sense of humor. Uh huh. Do, do you dip Rodney's balls in anything? Cause that sounds like a good uh, dip delivery vehicle. Oh, 
<laughs> like I always said on Fondue Friday, anything goes. You know, uh-huh. Dip them in anything. <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead and dip them in anything. And that's where, uh, you know, in the Bible, we're, we're forbidden from having some adventures of the flesh, but food yep. is yep. not necessarily that's right. one of those. If, you, right. if, if you're... If you've got foods from, you know, the approved list, you can put them together in any old way that you want to, and no one's going to stop you. Yeah, I feel like for Christians, when it comes to food, it's anything goes. And you know what? Type 2 diabetes is almost a Christian badge of honor. And you know what? I well, I say something about the type 2 real fast. I'm not convinced it's real. Same here. Same here. Oh, I Okay. Someone's it's, making a lot of money off of it. I'll tell you that much, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that it's even a real thing. It's one of those things like the opioid crises is so called, you know, that you hear all yeah. the time and you go, that's not a thing. I've never known a single person. Well, you already had one diabetes. Opi- why couldn't, why did you have to have another diabetes added on? You know, it's just like, there's only one kind of heart attack. It's like, okay, we, we have one kind of diabetes. Now what's this other diabetes that suddenly just showed up a few years ago? It's different, but it's the same. Sounds a little bit fishy to me. Well, I'll believe it when I see it, you know, and I haven't seen it yet. So, I mean, I've seen people who say, there are plenty of people in our church who say that they have it and they're on, they're on medication for it. But I, I think until I'm affected personally, I'll just, I'll just keep. I'll just keep my judgments to myself, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I love this section here where you do have healthy foods section and it is one page long and it is basically a testimony where you go into detail about how, isn't it not really about what food you're putting in your body, but it's what kind of spiritual food you're putting in your body. And I think this is just an awesome thing, which you're basically saying, you know, Eating trends can come and go, sometimes salty, sometimes sugar's bad, sometimes salt is bad, etc. But the one thing that never goes bad, the one thing that never expires is the word of Christ. Right. And I just think that's such a great reminder to have a whole section dedicated to that. And by section, I mean page. Well, thank you for pointing that out. You know, I feel like that uh, that section, people skip over it because it is only one page. But I think it's so important to remember that if you just imagine that everything you eat is going into your body wrapped in scripture. Like imagine that that there's a tortilla made of scripture and you're just wrapping everything you eat in it. There's no way that could be unhealthy. You know, God wants the best for us. And I think that if we're pure of heart, he's going to make sure that everything that goes into our body is going to be processed correctly and come out the other end with all the bad stuff out of it, you know? Yeah, that is true. And you know what? I don't know if you were there, Lisette, this summer at my women's conference, I went to a breakout about food and faith and Mm -hmm. it was all, and it was all females. I think it was FFF, food, faith, females. And, um, Mm -hmm. how to, you know, honor God with your diet and nutrition and whatnot. And, uh, what that what the speaker was talking about was so fascinating to me because she was convincing us that it doesn't matter what you eat it's the feeling you have when you eat it so if i were to eat a hostess ding dong one of my absolute favorites i like to take the um you know shell the chocolate shell part first i nibble it like a little rabbit so then it's just the chocolate sponge cake with the filling you know in the roll Delicious. Delicious. And I have a whole way of eating it. Same thing with a a, 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 a Twinkie. I like to uh, open it up and make two little boats, you know, like little two little canoes full of cream. And, and then I and I feel like I'm getting two Twinkies instead of one, you know. But um, what what this what the speaker was saying is that if I think this is bad while I'm consuming it, then it's going to be stored as fat and it's going to be bad for me. But if I think this is delicious and it's good for me, then you know what? It doesn't affect any of my um, lipids or uh, LDLs or uh, blood pressure or anything. So it's really how you feel, not about the food, which I thought was real cool. That is exactly right. You've just got to eat your food with the proper attitude. And Mm -hmm. that is why when I go to the doctor and he says, let me check your blood pressure. (laughs) I say, no, thank you. I know that it is just fine. I'm not feeling any pressure coming from the inside out. I know that what I'm eating is sanctified. You know why? Because I went into it with the proper respect in prayer. And, you know, if I had Rodney's balls for breakfast, then that's as nutritious as someone else having their overnight oats or 
whatever you know oh, healthy yuck. sludge uh-huh. that they might yeah, be yuck, consuming. Yeah. It's oh, can it's you have a Rodney healthy. ball for breakfast? Uh, yeah. Well, I keep a lot of Rodney balls in the freezer just in Smart. case because yep. uh, it's it's one of my favorite snacks. Honestly, um, I did notice. Mind, like I said, sometimes I I get. Uh, well, you know, Ronnie hasn't been around for a while. And so I'm sure you're lonely. Right. Yeah. Sure. I get cheered up when I open the freezer and I see those Rodney balls in there. That's cool. That's so cool. I did notice uh, one of these uh, Butch Jarnovitz's homemade ding-dongs, which I thought this was a very uh, funny thing. It just says, go go buy a box of ding-dongs, open them up, have fun. That's just <laughs> that a funny, funny joke like uh, that. in that there. That was so Because it, it's probably impossible to make those. Yeah, we got we got a whole bunch of recipes like that. This cookbook, it's not all serious, you know. It's not all serious cooking techniques. Sometimes we have fun. I'm sure you've seen some of the recipes we have for a happy family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That That's under troughs, you know. I think, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. How to troughs. keep your That's teens exactly focused right. on God. Yeah. A family is a container, a container for love. And that's why it's in the troughs awesome. section. Uh, you take, you know, a man and a woman and a godly marriage and you add uh-huh. a couple of kids and maybe a dog and some grass for them to run in and, you know, three cups of prayer and two cups of scripture and, you know, two tablespoons of fellowship. And that's your recipe for uh, you can add mayonnaise if you want, but it's not part of the recipe. And you that's your recipe for a happy family right there. And we've got all kinds of those recipes in there, too, which I think are just just fun reminders. Delicious. Of, good ways to be when you're when you're eating these other delicious I'll things. gobble it up. Why do you think that Indiana and, and specifically I, I feel like we are such a hotbed for culinary innovation and I just think why don't people think of the Midwest when they think of okay maybe I'll go you know yes I could go to Ibiza or I could go to Paris or or something for food why don't people come here for food tourism more often? Because I just yeah. think there's such innovative stuff going on. You know what I think it is? I think it might be some people are just afraid of adventure. You know, they uh-huh. know that we're we're cooped up in our homes part of the year because it gets so ding dang cold. And during <laughs> that time, we're making all kinds of experiments. We're experimenting with flavors and we're experimenting with textures. Like I said, piles and logs and um you know, we've got salty, we've got sweet, why not put it all together in one big pile or a tube or a log? And sometimes people can look at that and I think it makes them feel a little confused. They say to themselves, if I eat this, will it be sensory overload? Am I up to the challenge? And I got to say in the Midwest, we're made of very stern stuff. We're always willing to take that plunge into, you know, whatever it might be, maybe Okay, let's take, for example, there's a recipe that's in this current edition of the cookbook. There's a recipe that's all about getting protein and vegetables into your kid's diet, right? Sometimes you got to fool them a little bit. So the top layer is your traditional Rice Krispie treat. Awesome. The bottom layer is canned tuna, and then underneath that is a layer of cabbage. So it's like you get the kids in with the Rice Krispie treat. Before you know it, they've eaten a whole... A whole balanced dinner. And that's something that I think someone from, you know, uh, what did you say? Uh, 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 oh, in Ibiza. In Ibiza. Is that, is that a place? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a place. Yeah. Okay. Ibiza. Someone from there might turn their noses up at something like that and say, well, gosh, I, I don't even know what they eat there. I didn't know that was a place until now. But what I'm saying is people in the Midwest, they've got the time and the motivation to try these more adventurous foods. And I think that's one way in which we're very blessed. I mean, I think too, I like these th- recipe uh, that you had for flyover fries, which is sort of your wink to freedom fries. And I think that's also really interesting because people think Indiana, I'm just not going to go there. I'm, it's just a, it's just a place underneath my airplane when I'm on my way to Los Angeles or wherever. And I think, yeah, Sick. well, flyover fries, these look amazing. I mean, you've just got, I guess this one is categorized under heaps, mounds and piles. You can do anything with this uh, flyover fry well, dish. That's a fun one too. I think that one's Indiana specific because what you've got there is a giant pounded flat pork tenderloin. It's basically the size of a massive dinner plate, but the fries are hiding underneath. So you get through the pork tenderloin and you're like, what? There's more under here, but this is going to take so, me all day. And so are you carving into sort of the mound and then on the inside, you've got the fries. You know what, Gray? I don't tell people how to eat it. 
I would never. I think you should just follow your heart. You look at that pork tenderloin, and if you want to lift it up, you lift it. If you just want to put your face down in it, that's what you do. Maybe you nibble aside, and you see a potato peeking out, and you think to yourself, well, golly, I haven't had a day this good in a while. <laughs> you oh. know? I, it's just however you feel. Lisette, I think you are more than a treat and a treasure. Uh, Lisette and I, great. One time we were in a Wendy drive through and um, mm-hmm. and Lisette notices me dipping my, my fries in my Frosty, and she winked at me and said, I don't judge, I don't judge. And I said, if that is not Christ-like, I don't know what is. And then she also, we had the exact same order. Uh, we both go for that spicy uh, chicken fried sandwich there that uh, you can turn the heat up and down but she also does fries with the frosty but she doesn't dip it in the frosty Lisette goes fries then frosty then fries she goes she likes to go back and forth sweet and savory and I just think that that's so cool that we can have that kind of diversity in the church you know they say we're not diverse enough well guess what (laughs) yeah we got people who will eat their fries and shakes in all different kind of ways and you know why because we are all fearfully and wonderfully made Yes. And God has made us to eat our fries and shakes in whatever order we see fit. And we don't judge. That is the thing. We uh, Christians are known for their love. Um, we're not about policing behavior in any way, shape, or form, uh, or judging, you know, people's behavior. We're we're warm, we're welcoming. And Lisette, speaking of men, um yes. I was wondering, what's the ratio of submissions of recipes from women uh, or men? Like, do you get a lot from men? Because I know they're the leaders of the households and, you know, they're they're better at stuff than us, but they're also not well known for being in the kitchen. And so what what's that like for you? Right. Do men really well, even cook that much? I'm always trying to put the word out to get more recipes from the men of our church. And I'm so glad you brought that up. And if they're listening, get those recipes in, please. <laughs> <laughs> I want them. Um, but there's usually, I, I always set their recipes aside in one special section. I don't even divide it by shapes. I yeah. just call it foods men like. Awesome. So it's usually just a page or two. And of course, it's like the like the recipe you mentioned earlier, where it's get a box of ding dongs, open them up, have a good time. You know, some of them, you know, it's it's uh, stuff about how to, you know, gosh, uh, how to barbecue a hog or um, awesome. something that that makes men feel strong and accomplished. And uh, there's actually one really fun recipe in there this year. And uh, that one is, I want to say it's from Ed Meister, but he submitted one. You know, his oh, wife passed it. away a couple years ago. Yeah. And it's just, uh, you boil some spaghetti and you open a jar of Hunt's tomato sauce. Oh. And once the spaghetti is boiled, you dump the sauce on. And then you put the whole thing. He he's real detailed about it, and I just want to be encouraging. You know, you you just he, he's just making his spaghetti at home. He's he, he's doing the best he can, and and I feel like we need to give the men time and space to honor their their kitchen experiments like that. And is he? You know? And I, I notice he he's and is he blending it? Is that how it goes? So once he puts the the sauce with the spaghetti, he blends it. Well, according to him, men don't have time to chew. They're busy with different important things in the church. Yeah. And I absolutely understand that. You know, you're you're a man, you're out there doing things. Like who, who has time for all that jaw motion unless it's you're making the jaw motion telling other people what to do. Yeah. Oh, you gotta I love save, that. Save. You've got to save your energy. So if you take that spaghetti and you blend it up and you drink it like a smoothie, you can kind of take it on the go. It's less messy. You know, um, you can just leave, you'll, you'll leave it in your car while you go in to pick up a muffler or I don't know what, yeah, what these guys are I, doing. I mean, I do yeah. I, seven of my eight meals a day are blended. And so oh, I, cool. I think that would be really helpful. Maybe next year you could do a whole section of blends. Uh, I'll take that under advisement, but you know, this, this cookbook, Gray, I gotta be honest with you. It's really, it's, it's my baby. <laughs> you know, Maybe I'll put some of your blends in the foods men like section, but we'll see if we get enough, enough blender recipes, maybe I'll, um, add that to a new section called, uh, you know, slurry or something like that. Uh-huh. But, um, but until that time, I, it's going to go, it's going to snuggle right in with all those other foods men like. <sighs> 
Well, so this has been just lovely, Lisette. And I've noticed you've got this a, a big platter here Beautiful. that is shrink wrapped and and uh, and is got something under it. Have you brought one of your recipes to share with with us today? Well, I think if you peel back that saran wrap and you look real close, you're going to see that the bottom layer is a layer of those famous Rodney balls. That oh, I was yay! About. Now, those are the ones that are brown swagger and cream cheese blended together and then melded and sort of uh, rolled in, in crushed nuts. But then on top of that, I've got what I call the Rodney rod. And that's that's oh. in the tube section yep, of the yep. cookbook. Makes now, sense. the Rodney rod is a bunch of, so you, what you do is you take a bunch of chicken gizzards and you grind them real, real fine. You mix those with breadcrumbs and some tomato paste, and then you're going to wrap that in a dough made of flour, ground ham. You're going to put some ground mustard in that, and then you're going to cover the whole thing with a, um, it's a banana ham glaze. So... Mm -hmm. You've got you've got all that. And what I do is, well, you have to let it sit in the fridge for at least 24 hours to set up. But then you place it on a cool grill and you kind of let it you let it sit in that cool grill for a while. And then you place it under the broiler for 15 minutes. And so it's labor intensive, but it's worth it. I can't wait for you guys to try this. Oh, here we go. OK, awesome. well, I'll try a bit here. Mm. Mm. OK. Oh. Oh, the yeah. banana! I'm Don't, really getting. Okay, you have to get a you have to get a bite of the ball with the rod. You have oh, to eat okay. it. Oh, okay. Oh, this is. <laughs> you gotta oh, eat them together. Mm. And get mm. some of that sauce. Don't mm. forget the sauce. Mm. Yeah, if food is just a vehicle for sauce to me. I'm like, I just want to get any kind of the. Oh, this sauce is good. The banana too. really comes through. Yeah, that's yeah, really I love nice. a sauce that's banana forward, especially with something like ham. It's a taste of the tropics. Well, and when I, Rodney comes back, I'm sure he will love to have this. And I'm sure, and it's nice to see you use the dust and particulate uh, again in a recipe because, you know, it's not just a section of the book. It's used throughout the other shapes too. And I feel like, you know what, Parmesan is a dust and particulate too when it's grated up. And, um, you know, when you're putting a dust on your food, it doesn't add calories. So I say that's a win. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I'm just getting a little, it's just so nice to see someone else enjoying the Rodney balls and the Rodney rod is just when it, sometimes I'm just eating them all alone in my house, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, these are I think so Rodney good. would be so tickled to know that someone else is enjoying these recipes that are based on him. And I wonder oh. if somewhere wherever he is, if he's up in if he's up in heaven, if he if he has been pre raptured, like I believe, I wonder if he could he could sort of feel it. He could feel that someone's down here eating the Rodney balls. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's looking down and he can, he just knows. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I bit a bit of bone here in the Rodney Rod. Uh, let me see that. No, that's just cartilage. 